Let's talk about patent infringement. Claim infringement is a better term. How do you determine if your patent is being infringed? Well, the portion of the patent that defines what your invention is are the claims. The claims are the name of the game. To infringe a patent, you have to infringe the claims. And whether the claims are infringed or not is a matter of whether the accused infringing device or an accused infringing apparatus includes each and every limitation recited in your patent claim. So what do I mean by that? Well, if this box represents an accused apparatus of some sort and the boxes, the small boxes within the larger box are components of that accused apparatus, then we have to do an analysis and see if the claim reads upon the accused apparatus. The legal language is that the claim has to read upon, the limitations have to read upon an aspect or component of the accused apparatus. So how do you do that analysis? So if this is an example claim, I've used this kind of example claim before, it's an apparatus comprising three what are called limitations. A first widget, a second widget connected to the first widget and a gadget connected to the first widget and the second widget. So those are the limitations that define your invention. In order to prove infringement of that claim, each one of these limitations has to be found. So let's take a look at this example. So is there a first widget? So let's say we get, get this apparatus, we take it apart and we see it has the first widget. So we've got the first limitation in the accused device. So that's heading in the right direction. We look then for the second widget and we have the second widget. So again, we're heading in the right direction to show infringement. But notice that the second limitation has more information. It's not just that there's a first and second widget present in the accused apparatus. The second widget also has to be connected to the first widget. So we look to see is the first widget connected to the second widget. And in this example, it is. So we now have the first limitation present in the accused apparatus. And we also have the second limitation present in the accused apparatus. So we're on our way to showing infringement. Now we have to look at the last and third limitation, a gadget connected to the first widget and the second widget. So we look, this is not a gadget, this is not a gadget, this is a gadget. So, ha, huh, we have the gadget. So is the device or apparatus infringing our claim? Well, we have to look to see if it's connected to the first widget and the second widget. And in this case, it doesn't have any connection to the first widget and the second widget. So what does that mean? It means the claim is not infringed. There's no infringement. Now, there are two types of infringement that you have to be aware of. One is called literal infringement. The analysis that we just went through here is for what's called literal infringement. Literal infringement means just what it sounds like. Every limitation of the claim has to be literally present in the accused apparatus. So in this case, we found that the first two limitations were literally present. The third limitation was literally present, but not in the way that it needed to be, which is it needed to be not only present, but it needed to be connected to the first widget and the second widget. And in this example, it isn't. And so this claim is not literally infringed by that accused apparatus. So what's the second type of infringement? The second type of infringement is called infringement under the doctrine of equivalence. So it's the doctrine of equivalence. And this is referred to by the acronym DOE, doctrine of equivalence. So in order to infringe by doctrine of equivalence, even if one of those limitations isn't literally present, if there's another limitation that performs substantially the same function in substantially the same way and achieves the substantially the same result, then that may be infringing under doctrine of equivalence. Well, it, if it meets those requirements, it should be infringing under the doctrine of equivalence. 
So let's say we now go back to the accused apparatus and we look at the gadget, which is present, and we look to see if it can meet a doctrine of equivalence type analysis. Well, the gadget is not connected to, at least from appearances, it's not connected to the first widget and the second widget. Let's say that that connection is a physical connection between the first widget and second widget, some kind of a, if it's an electronic device, let's say it's a communication bus or some type of a serial connection, some type of a circuit connection. The gadget is, doesn't have this type of circuit connection to the first widget and the second widget. However, when we analyze the accused apparatus further, we find that it does have a wireless connection. So these are the radio frequency connections that it's making to the first widget and the second widget. So it doesn't have a physical connection and it may be that the way the claim is interpreted, it may not need to be a physical connection, but we'll talk about that in another video on claim interpretation. But looking at it from the standpoint of doctrine of equivalence, so looking at this accused apparatus from the standpoint of doctrine of equivalence, there still is a connection Although it's not a physical connection, there's a wireless connection from the gadget to the first widget and the second widget. In a case like that, I would argue that the third limitation of the claim is present in this accused apparatus. It's not a physical connection, but it's connected in such a way that it's doing substantially the same thing in substantially the same way as the claimed subject matter, and therefore, I would argue, it's still infringing under the doctrine of equivalence. So again, in summary, there are two types of infringement. There's what's called, there is what's called literal infringement, where each limitation of the claim must be found to be present in the accused infringing apparatus. Under doctrine of equivalence analysis, one or sometimes more limitations may not be literally present, but there may be some aspect, some component or aspect of the accused apparatus that performs substantially the same function in substantially the same way, in which case it would be infringing under doctrine of equivalence. One other quick example of doctrine of equivalence, a classic example of that is where a fastener is recited in a claim and the fastener may be a machine screw, for example, but the accused infringing device uses some other type of connection, like a nail. Well, the nail might be performing substantially the same function in substantially the same way, and therefore the accused device may still be found to be infringing under doctrine of equivalence. So fasteners is one example of where using one type of fastener in your claim and looking at the accused device and the accused device has a different type fastener, it may still be infringing under a doctrine of equivalence analysis.